Good morning, Kiana. Blessings to you. Blessings to you and your family. Pray that you had a wonderful week. Welcome to the third month of the new year. Welcome to the third month of the new year. This is the first quarter of 2019. Blessings. Oh, okay. What a blessing Watch for watching Advances Carol Brown on TV. Thank you so much. Who's that? Kiana. Oh, thank you. My wife said thank you. I sent out the... Uh, good morning, Jonathan. Blessings to you and your family. Blessings. Pray that you had a wonderful week. Welcome to the third month of 2019, the first quarter. I really want her book. Okay. All you have to do is go on the website and order it. We'll send it out. <clears throat> Which one is that? Kiana. All we have to, all, all you have to do is uh, go on the website. And matter of fact, she's sending them out on a lot of them out on Monday or Tuesday. One. Yeah, Tuesday. As you come on, do me a favor. Put down fifty-eight slash uncommon seed. Fifty-eight slash uncommon seed. We're starting a new month. Starting a new month, 58 slash Uncommon Seed. We're starting a new month. We're standing with the $58 seed, and we're sowing an Uncommon Seed. I want to talk a little bit about, thank you, I want to talk a little bit about uh, God's perspective today. God's perspective God's perspective. God's perspective. Hallelujah. When you operate in faith, faith gives you a different perspective on life. Okay. Somebody write that down. Faith gives you a different perspective on life. The Bible said we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith gives you a different perspective on life. Good, thank you. Faith gives you a different perspective on life. And the reason why you have a different perspective is because you have God's word concerning uh, the situation. If you walk in by faith, but you see things like everybody else sees them, something is wrong. Faith gives you a different perspective. Everybody else saw the giants, but David said, as big as he is, how can I miss him? The servant saw the enemy, but the prophet said, those who are with us, are more than those who are against us. Faith gives you a different perspective. Not only does faith give you a different perspective, faith gives you God's perspective. Faith gives you God's perspective. And before I get off of this scope this morning, I'm going to pray for you. I'm not going to pray that God show you uh, hallelujah. What I see, I'm going to pray that God open your eyes to see what he sees, that you get his perspective concerning your life, his perspective concerning your prosperity, his perspective concerning your health, his perspective. Okay. So faith gives you God's perspective. Faith gives you God's perspective on life. That's what you need. Good morning, Sonia. Blessings to you and your family. Pray that you had a wonderful week. Welcome to the first quarter of 2019. Third month of 2019. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. 
As you come on, please put down 58 slash uncommon seed. 58 slash uncommon seed. Every month we stand with the $58 seed. And we will be sowing an uncommon seed at the end of this month. The end of this month. This is this represents the first quarter of the month. I decree and declare that this first quarter shall be a strong quarter. And every quarter of 2019 shall be a blessing to you. Every quarter of 2019 will be a great blessing to you. Today we're talking about God's perspective. Write this down. Faith gives you another perspective. Faith gives you God's perspective. Faith causes you to see things like God sees it. When they went up against the giants, one group said, we are not able to defeat them. Another group said, we are able to win. Why? The first group who had a negative report, they were basing it on their own ability. They were basing it on their own perspective. But when Caleb and Joshua said, we will go up at once and defeat the enemy. Why? They wasn't going on their own strength. They were going on what God had said. He said, I have given you the land. It didn't matter who was in the land. God gave it to them. It doesn't matter who is in the place. If God said it's yours, it is yours. Hallelujah. So when you get a word on a situation, then you are able to gain and receive God's perspective. Okay. So Caleb and Joshua said, God said it. That's it. That's it. So I want you to get God's perspective on uh, your situation. I don't care how impossible your situation is. Mary was given a word. You are highly favored. You will have a child, a son. And at first she said, how can this be? Seeing I know not a man. And then later on she began to say, be it unto me according to your word. And many of you this morning, you God has spoken things. Things have been prophesied to you. And it seems to be impossible, but I want you to declare right now, be it unto me according to your word. You're trying to figure out how you're going to get that home. Be it unto me according to your word. You're trying to figure out how you're coming out of debt. Be it unto me according to your word. And I'm going to pray for you even as the prophet prayed for his servant. He said, Lord, open his eyes. Lord, open his eyes. In other words, Lord, give him your perspective. Cause him to see what you see. Cause him to think about it like you think about it. I wonder what would happen if your prayer was not give me, do this or do that, but if your prayer was, Lord, give me your perspective concerning what I am going through. Lord, show me how you see this and help me to respond the way you would respond. That's powerful. Lord, show me. Come on, say, Lord, give me your perspective. And then once I have your perspective, cause me to respond like you would respond. Hallelujah. If that was your prayer and my prayer, guess what? We wouldn't worry. We wouldn't fret. Why? Because if you saw it like God saw it, then you wouldn't see it as big as you think it is. Because some things that we think are really big to God, they are nothing. Why? Because he said this light affliction. God bless you, Shakisha. Pray that you had a wonderful week. 
We are in the uh, third quarter, I mean the first quarter of the new year, the third month. We're talking about God's perspective today. Getting God's perspective, getting God's perspective, getting God's perspective concerning your life, getting God's perspective concerning your situation. Okay, may that be your prayer today. Lord, give me your perspective. When David fought the giant, he did not have the perspective of the people. Everybody looked at how big Goliath was. Everybody looked at how strong Goliath was. But David said, my God, as big as he is, how can I miss him? David had a different perspective. The perspective that David had caused him, watch this now, the perspective that David had, Shakisha, caused him to run to the giant. The perspective that the people had caused them to run from the giant because David understood this is not a physical battle. This is a spiritual battle. He said, you come to me, you come against me with spears and swords, but I come against you in the name of the Lord. What would happen if you understood that what you're presently going through is not your battle? What you're presently going through is the Lord's battle. And if you would understand whatever comes against you comes against your God, the Bible said, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. Right where you are, begin to praise him. Right where you are, begin to lift him up. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. That is what worship does. Worship causes you to let God arise. Worship causes you to bring God into the situation. Write that down. Worship invites God into your situation. My God, hallelujah. Come on, somebody put that down. Worship invites God into your situation. I know people say when the praises go up, the blessings come down, but I love to say it like this. When the praises go up, God shows up because he inhabits the praises of his people. And when you praise God, and thank you, Sonia, and when you worship God, the blessings don't come down. God shows up. Somebody write that down. When the praises goes up, God shows up. And when God shows up, I don't need a blessing because I have the blesser. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? When the praises go up, God shows up. How do you know? Because he inhabits the praises of his people. And when he shows up, my God, you erect the throne and God comes to sit on the throne. And when he comes on the throne, when he comes in the midst of the people, he comes to execute judgment. There you go, Sonia. When the praises go up, God shows up. There you go. When he comes in the midst of his people, he comes to execute judgment. That is what a judge does. When a judge sits down in his seat, Good morning, Kadia. Blessings to you. He comes to execute judgment. My God. And whatever's coming against you, my God, God begins to fight that. My God. That's why it's so important for you and I to learn the power of praise and worship. Because when you praise and when you worship, you enthrone the presence of God, mm -hmm. and he comes to execute judgment against everything that is against you. My God, somebody received that. I oh, speak that. God comes to execute judgment, Kiana, against everything that is against you. God comes to execute judgment against everything that is against you, Sonia. God comes to execute judgment against everything that is against you, Shakisha. God comes and executes judgment 
against everything that is against you, Kadia, everything that is against you, Sonia, everything that's against you, the author, everything that's against you, Evangelist Brian. God comes to execute judgment against everything that is against you, Jonathan. My God, that's why your praise and your worship is so powerful. My God, the Bible said, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and there arose an earthquake, and the earthquake shook the building. My God, and the building shook the prisoners, and the prisoners shook off the shackles. My God, notice their praise and their worship caused an earthquake. In the earthquake, my God, shook the foundations of, yes, Lord, of the building. Now, I used to think years ago that God sent an earthquake, yes, Lord, so that they could get out. But I found out that their praise was not to get them out. Their praise was to get God in. Your praise invites God into the situation. Right where you are, somebody shout, Lord, I invite you into this situation. The more I put my hands on it, the worse it gets. The more I talk about it, the more I worry about it. But this morning, I take my hands off it. This morning, I take my mouth off it. This morning, I begin to invite you into the situation. You said in all my ways, acknowledge you and you would direct my path. So, Lord, I acknowledge you as my burden bearer. Lord, I acknowledge you as my healer. I acknowledge you as my breakthrough. I acknowledge you as my peace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Do me a favor. My God, there you go, Shakisha. Good. Lord, I invite you into the situation, whatever it is, with my children, with my family, with my marriage, with my uh, finances, whatever it is. Good. Yeah. My God. Hallelujah. If you're not careful, you'll forget to acknowledge him. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge me. Acknowledge him. My God, Lord, this is too much for me. I acknowledge you. You are my keeper. You are my shield. You are my buckler. And I give you praise and I give you glory. So we want to get God's perspective concerning our life. Okay. Faith gives you a different perspective. And the perspective that faith gives you is God's perspective, okay? That's what you want. You want to see things like God sees it, and then you want to respond like God sees it. I told you on one occasion, Paul, being inspired by the Holy Spirit, he said, this light affliction, which is only for a moment, mm -hmm. see, this light affliction which is only for a moment. How could Paul say that? Because he got God's perspective on his situation. And could it be this morning that if you would ask God for his perspective, that worry would have to leave? Could it be that if you ask God for his perspective, fear would have to leave? Come on, right where you are, say, Lord, give me your perspective concerning what I'm going through. See, soon as you say, Lord, give me your perspective, fear has to go, anxiety has to go, worry has to go. All that has to go once you get God's perspective. Why? Because you're going to see this is a light affliction. This is a light affliction. My God, my God, this is a light affliction. Okay. Let's look at those three things as I close. Good. Lord, give me your perspective. Good. This is a light affliction only for a moment and it's working for us a far and exceeding great reward. 
Okay, number one, write this down and make this confession. This is a light affliction. Come on. This is a light affliction. Good. Come on, make that confession. Number one, this is a light affliction. Come on, it may be a $2,000 debt, a $10,000 debt, a $100,000. It doesn't matter what it is. To God, it is a light affliction. Good, good. This is a light affliction. My God, hallelujah. This is a light affliction. Why? In other words, this is what you're saying. What you are going through is no match for God. Yes, Lord. Come on. What you are going through, what I am going through is no match for God. That is why it is a light affliction to you and I. It may be a great affliction, but to God, it is a light affliction because it is no match for God. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you and I are trying to figure it out. You and I are trying. And God said, be still and know that I am God. Kiana, be still and know that I am God. Shakisha, be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Be still and know that I am God. Kadia, Sonia, Jonathan, Sue. Evangelist Bryant, Michael, be still and know that I am God. And when you get still, what does he tell you? This is a light affliction. This is a light affliction. And then he says, it's only for a moment. It's only for a moment. Write that down. It's only for a moment. Write that down. Number one, it's a light affliction. Number two, it's only for a moment. What does that mean? That it's coming to pass. Good God Almighty. It's coming to pass. Lord have mercy. Kadia, it's not meant to stay long. It's only for a a moment, Shakisha. That means it's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. And the enemy wants you to think you're going to stay in this. The enemy wants you to think you're not coming out of this, but you need to declare this is only for a moment. What I'm going through is a light affliction. What I'm going through, it's only for a moment. It didn't come to stay. It came to pass. Hallelujah. I decree and declare that over you. It did not come to stay. It came to pass. Lack cannot stay. It has to pass. Sickness cannot stay. It has to pass. Worry cannot stay. It has to pass. My God, that is not your inheritance. That is not your inheritance. That is not the will of God for your life. And if it's not the will of God for your life, it has to pass. My God. So number one, it's a light affliction. Number two, it's only for a moment. And then lastly, number three, it's working for you and not against you. Come on. It's working for you and not against you. Number one, light affliction. Number two, only for a moment. Number three, it's working for you and not against you. I know it feels bad. I know it looks bad. I know it seems bad. But what you are presently going through, it is not working against you. It is working for you. You need to declare that today. What I'm going through is, is working for me. Good, good, Kadir. What I'm going through is working for me. Hallelujah. I may be crying. Yes, Lord, but it's working for me. I may be hurting. Yes, Lord, but it's working for me. I may not understand it, but it's working for me. You've got to know these three things. Okay. As I close, you've got to know these three things. Number one, what you are presently going through is a light affliction. It's no match for God. Number two, 
What you are presently going through, it's only for a moment. It did not come to stay. It came to pass. And number three, what you are presently going through, it is not working against you. It is working for you. Hallelujah. You are looking temporary. God is looking eternally. My God, this thing is working in you patience. This thing is working in you strength. This thing is working in you joy. All right. God bless you. If you receive this morning, tap that screen. Tap that screen if you receive that. My God, if you were encouraged, empowered, enlightened this morning, number one, it is a light affliction. It's no match for God. Number two, it's only for a moment. It came to pass. Number three, it's not working against you, but it is working for you. All right, before we close today, uh, write this down, please. 58 slash Uncommon Seed. Every month, this is a new month. We start the month off sowing a $58 seed. And by the end of this month, March, the first quarter, we will be sowing an uncommon seed to the Lord. All right. $58 seed every month. And then this month, because it's the first quarter, this will be the ending of the first quarter. And I'm praying that you will end this quarter strong and that every quarter in 2019 will be productive. Every quarter in 2019 will be fruitful for you. Okay. Every quarter be productive. Every quarter be fruitful. Excellent. Excellent. All right. We love you all. Know that God has you on his mind. You are, he is mindful. David said, the Lord is mindful of you. That means his mind is full of you. Well, have a productive day today. Have a fruitful day, but most of all, walk in victory. Also, that's what I meant to ask you. Did you all get the video? I sent out a video of Evangelist Bryant doing her interview on CTN. Let me know if you got the video or not from CTN, Evangelist Bryant doing the video, CTN, it aired last week, and I just sent out the video. Yes, you got it. Good, good, good. Those of you who want the book, all you got to do is go to the website and order it. She'll be sending them out next week. Did everybody get the link I sent to the interview with Evangelist Bryant? that she had on CTN. Yes, got it. It was excellent. Good, good. I learned a lot. Excellent, good. Do me a favor then, write down her email, Carol Bryant, Carol Bryant4 at a, uh, uh, my fault, Carol Bryant4 at yahoo.com, Carol Bryant4 at yahoo.com, Carol Bryant4 at yahoo.com. Carol Bryant 4 at yahoo.com. Carol Bryant 4 at yahoo.com. Put that down. Carol Bryant 4 at yahoo. And just send her a word of encouragement. If you saw it, send her a word of encouragement. Carol Bryant 4 at yahoo.com. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Carol Bryant 4. Okay, good. Everybody else, did you get the link? If you didn't get it, I'll send it to you. Shaki. Shakisha, I don't I'm trying to think if we have your email or not. Uh, if we don't have your email, Shakisha, please uh my you can uh Carol Bryant4 at yahoo.com. Just send us your email and we will send you the link. Carol Bryant4 at yahoo.com and we will send you the link. If you want the book set up to win in life. Go on the website, www.fhgm.org. Go on the website, and you can order it there. All right? God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Will do. Good. Excellent. Have a wonderful weekend. We love you. We honor you. We celebrate you. Remember, do something today to increase your value. Number two, keep seed in the ground. Number three, keep a joyful attitude. Number four. Use your words to frame your world. Remember, 
He always causes you to triumph. Be encouraged. We love you. God bless you.